Hello everybody. So I am working on the content. Got some temporary textures in, but I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the actual way that the mod works. I know a couple of people have asked me how it works and I don't want people to have to wait for my slow ass to finish building shit. So I'm going to talk about how this works and if you want to use something similar in your own project, certainly feel free. If you're not interested in C-sharp coding, turn away now because we're done talking about simple stuff like content and now we're going to talk about C-sharp coding. So this game is a test bed that's intended to test how a particular system would work for an RPG engine. So the idea being that you would be creating characters and cutscenes and new spells and all that stuff using this same kind of system. So the mods in this game have that same flavor. They're intended to be more like RPG content than actual mods. And how does that work? Well, I'm hoping that everyone is familiar with the inspector view here which gives you access to all of the details. Whether you're editing a prefab or an in-world object, you can change these details to suit your needs. But these details don't easily allow you to connect things together in arbitrary ways. Even if I did create events, or run on events, but even if I did create slots where you could drop targets, that would be very, very restricted because it would always do the same thing. So what you do instead is you create these Unity events. Unity events are a very powerful tool where you can drop in whatever objects and code you need uh, without doing any additional coding. This is a huge burden off of the average developer because as long as the functions you've got on your objects are smart, this can replace all of your custom coding. So, for example, if we wanted to have fireworks go off after, you know, when the, when the hyperbeds get built, we could have fireworks go off simply by hitting plus here going over here, finding our fireworks object, I don't have one, but we'll use the covers, and then setting it to active. There we are. What we've just told it to do is turn the covers on when the object gets built, but we could have easily put in a, a particle effects generator and told it to, gen to, you know, to fire them off. No coding, no stress, and no limits. This is a powerful way to do things. This is especially powerful because you don't have to invoke Unity events in the same way as you might think. So here I've just created four slots. And what I can do is I can actually put the covers in each of these slots here. And I can do the game object.set active in each of these slots here. And I can have it flicker on and off. I'll take that last one out just because I want it to stay on at the end. So if you were to just invoke this on build complete it would just go through all three and it would be like flicker on off on off and we wouldn't ever get a flicker because it would be set so fast that the frame wouldn't refresh <coughs> but you don't have to execute unity events like that it's actually quite easy to execute unity events one after another internally so this is how you might create cutscenes you'd have an, a unity event which does not get invoked in this standard way but instead you invoke number one then you wait for a time or you look at you know it, it gives you some kind of, of wait return, uh, not necessarily return, but it sets some kind of weight variable and then you look at the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. And in that way you could execute a, a very simple cutscene. There's no branching path or anything there, but you could do that as well. Um, the idea being that these would not be things you would have to manually code in as script. Some point scripts are better. Um, scripts are faster to program if you need to program a lot of them, but they are kind of heady. One of the most powerful elements of a Unity event that isn't, it hasn't been mentioned yet, it lets you wire your functions in regardless of what they are. So normally when you're writing a mod or writing, say, a script that makes someone walk across the screen, stab another guy, and then say, ha ha ha, I win, whatever you need. If you build that script, you have to, you have to understand where your function goes. You have to understand what you're overwriting and how it gets called and all that nonsense. If you're using Unity events, I could write a custom piece of code here and then I could just reference it. I could say, okay, wait, well, now it's time to call that custom piece of code. And I wouldn't have to worry about whether I'd overridden the right object or whatever. I could just do it. And that's powerful. But behind the scenes, Unity events have to be wired together. Just because I create these Unity events doesn't mean they get called. So not only do I have to create all of the Unity events that allow the player to inject code when they might need to inject code, I also have to call those Unity events 
at the right times, which obviously can get a little bit frustrating, because you have to be able to wire together a large number of objects, an arbitrarily large number of objects. How do you do that? The simplest way to do that is via a static list. So here's the in-world resources. This just tracks all of the resources that have been defined in the game. Things like wood is a resource, uh, metal is a resource, plastic is a resource, work is a resource. It just tracks them all. So what, they ha what happens is uh, when the mod turns on, it adds its resources to the list, and, uh, and this list is just global, it's universal. That's what the static does. So once the resources are in the list, they're relatively easy to track down. You can find them by resource name. You can do all sorts of other stuff to them. And all of the stuff in this universe acts on that same basic principle. The mods add themselves to a list. If I open up the basic fundamental mod... No, that's weather. That's mods. This mod, static list mods, and then what happens is when it starts up it adds itself. See? Not difficult. And that's the core idea here is you've got a lot of these lists, these static lists of objects. And that allows you to track an arbitrary number of them because each object just signs up for whatever it needs to sign up for. And if you've got a functional system resource, then it can just sign up for its own, you know, it can sign up for whatever it needs to sign up for. In this case, the resources actually use a combination of events rather than signing up for a static list. It signs up for static events. Some advantages and some disadvantages there. I won't get into that. You probably won't need to do that. So that's the core idea. You've got static lists, and everything signs up for all the static lists it could possibly need to be in. Then you can go through those static lists and invoke all of the functions, all of the Unity events that need to be invoked. It's, it's that simple. Eh. It's not that simple. It's that simple in practice. It's in th that simple in theory. In practice, you have to do a lot of additional stuff. Um, sometimes you have to use actual events. Sometimes you might have to do something more complex. Uh, but at its heart, it's all about gathering up every single thing that could conceivably need to be gathered up and then calling Unity events. <laughs>